Now that we've discussed how p-type and n-type semiconductor materials are fabricated and what it means to be n-type or p-type, we need to talk about what happens when we join these different types of materials together. The joining of differently doped materials together is what forms the basis for modern uh, semiconductor electronic devices. So the first thing that we're going to look at is what happens if we take a p-type material and um, bring it together, join it in close proximity to an n-type material. Now, as we discuss this, what we're going to imagine is that we're taking this p-doped material and this n-doped material and bringing them close together. In reality, what's going on is that uh, in the fabrication process, an n-type or p-type uh, layer of silicon or other semiconductor uh, would be deposited directly onto the other type so that this junction that we're going to form by um, joining or bringing these two types of materials together will be very intimately related, very closely related to each other. Uh, so it's not as simple as taking um, two pieces of materials and just pressing them together. They have to be joined uh, uh, and bonded very well chemically for this process to occur. But nevertheless, um, we can imagine that uh, we're taking this p-doped and n-doped uh, materials and bringing them together. And you'll recall from our discussion of uh, p-type materials and n-type materials that we can represent um, the uh, valence band and the, uh, the top of the valence band energy and the bottom of the conduction band energy. Um, and we can represent uh, the location of the Fermi energy level for a p-type material is going to be close to the um, valence band. Uh, for an n-type material, because we've added extra uh, additional um, electrons uh, that are able to uh, readily jump into the uh, conduction band of the material, the Fermi energy level is going to be um, closer to the conduction band energy level. Now, in this schematic here, I have a uh, p-type material and n-type material where the p-type material is represented as having um, extra positive charges. Now, recall that that's not the case. Remember that um, this has no uh, charge associated with it, either p-type or n-type, because it's electrically neutral. All we've done is we've replaced some of the, for instance, silicon atoms with different, um, with different uh, materials or different uh, chemicals uh, so that uh, there are uh, absences of electrons, but the number of electrons is balanced by the number of protons. So there's no net electrical charge on here. I'm just trying to schematically represent the fact that we have some additional holes here and some um, additional uh, electrons that are weakly bound to the, um, to the lattice or to the uh, crystal structure in the n-type side. Okay, so what's going to happen when we bring these two materials together? Well, when we bring these two materials together, since we have uh, the material on the p-type side that has these holes uh, that are wanting to grab electrons in them to, to, to make their valence uh, states happy, and uh, these in, uh, over here on the n-type side we have um, electrons that are kind of wandering throughout the crystal that don't really have a good place, to have a home uh, atom to... Um, to, to uh, r rotate around. So when that happens, uh, right in this area where we join the materials together, we're going to get a migration of charges across this junction. So some of these negative charges are going to um, are, are going to move over uh, towards the p-type side to fill some of these holes. And that process is going to continue, and as that process continues, as we move some charges uh, some of the electrons move over to fill some of the holes on this side. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually now, we took a neutral material, and from the n-type side right here, since we took this neutral material and we're removing electrons from it, we actually accumulate a positive charge in the region that's close to the junction right here. Okay, so this is actually representing the electrical charge. We're going to have a positive charge because of the net motion of electrons to the p-type side. And similarly, in this region over here, we're going to have a net negative charge in the area right around the junction because we've taken these uh, electrons from the n-type and added them to the p-type side. And this process of migration is going to continue, but as we, um, as we continually build this charge, what we're going to do is we're going to establish an electric field 
in the vicinity of the junction between the n-type and the p-type material. And this electric field is going to go from the, uh, in the conventional sense, is going to go from the um, area of positive charge to the area of negative charge. Now, further on either side of the junction, we have positive charges here. We have these holes. Um, and we have these electrons, these extra electrons in the material over here. And because of this electric field, because of this excess of uh, negative charges, they're going to try to go towards this direction. But we're going to find that the holes, as well as the uh, electrons, since they're attracted um, to this area of uh, different charge, what's going to happen is that um, they're going to go towards that area of charge, but then they're going to experience this electric field and not be able to move across the junction. So eventually they're going to be turned away. All right, and we're going to um, establish this region where this is still a neutral material over here and over here. So net neutral charge. But right around the area of the junction we've established this internal electric field which is the same thing as a built-in voltage um, or an electronic uh, excuse me, an electronic potential, which is the same thing as a voltage. Now we can represent what's going on here by using our band diagrams as well. And it turns out that when we take these two types of materials and join them together and we maintain this junction at thermodynamic equilibrium, what's going to have to happen is that the Fermi energy levels are going to have to line up. So we're going to take the n-type and the p-type band diagrams and we're going to adjust them. We're going to have to shift uh, the p-type up and the n-type down so that the Fermi energies align with each other. And when that happens then we can redraw our p-type material and our n-type material and then in the region where we're establishing the electric field we get some band bending that occurs. All right, so we represent the area of the junction just like this, where the Fermi energy level ma is maintained constant under um, thermodynamic equilibrium. So in this case, um, we now have these regions um, of positive charge, of net positive charge here, and net negative charge here on the p-type side, which creates this electric field. Okay, and we can represent what's going on with the charge carriers here, the holes and the electrons, using this band diagram. Now we'll start off using, um, looking at electrons. Now electrons want to always can stay at their lowest energy state. So um, electrons are always seeking to go down in energy or go down on this graph. So um, at uh, room temperature, or at thermodynamic equilibrium, we'll have a few electrons that are up in the conduction band and free to move throughout the material. But very few of them will have enough energy to actually make it over to the uh, p-type side of the material. In fact, most of them are like uh, they're they're like balls uh, or ball bearings. They're going to roll downhill. So if they're moving, if they have momentum moving in this direction what's going to happen is they're not going to have sufficient energy, they'll be turned around and remain inside the n-type material. Now we can do the same thing with holes, except holes are these positive um, particles, and these positive particles, we call them, we say that they act like bubbles. They're bubbles because um, holes on this graph will want to seek a higher energy state, they'll want to move up on this graph. All right, and um, in the p-type material we have excess holes here, but these excess holes are going to be close to the uh, um, conduction, uh, excuse me, uh, close to the valence band edge, and they are not going to have sufficient energy to get under this hump right here. So they're going to be turned away if they reach, uh, if they come to this uh, side of the built-in electric potential, and they'll be turned away and remain inside the p-type material. Now it turns out that all of this combined together, uh, taking a p-type material and an n-type material, gives us the foundation of a diode. All right, and uh, where the p-type side is the anode, and the n-type side is the cathode.
Yep. And we'll talk about um, how the diode works in terms of the energy band diagrams and what we've just discussed right here in the next video.